Hey graphic designers, this is Mr. Granlund here. We're going to take a look at the next tutorial, the Giuseppe Archimboldo tutorial. Now Giuseppe Archimboldo was um, a painter from Italy in the mid-1500s. And you can see what he did here. And we're going to use this style of painting that he kind of um, made popular and apply it to Photoshop and use kind of these this idea of taking vegetables and creating a portrait or a picture of a person out of those vegetables. If you want to, you can head on over to Wikipedia and take a look at who Giuseppe is. There's some interesting information, you know, uh, for instance, art historians look back and kind of debate whether or not uh, Giuseppe was, in fact, mentally unhealthy. Um, most believe that he was not. He just kind of found his little niche in painting portraits with fruit in there. Um, but there's some interesting things about his life and what happened to his paintings that you can take a look at. All right. Now in this tutorial, there's the videos that go through the step-by-step -step tutorials. But then we also have pictures here that you're free to use and a written lesson plan. So a note about this written lesson plan first. It was, it's quite a bit older um, we, when we had a different kind of internet interface uh, for doing stuff online. So some of that is going to be a little bit different, but all the tools will still apply. Instead of a pumpkin, I updated things like doing avocado and, but all the same sort of selection techniques are used. And the whole point of this exercise is to get you better and more familiar with various selection techniques inside of Photoshop and to help you practice different ways of getting really, really good things selected. All right, so let's head over to Photoshop. And in here, it says make a 7x5 resolution 72. I'm going to say, let's go bigger than that. Okay, let's make a 5x7 So we're going to create a new, we're going to go 7, 5, but we're going to leave the resolution 300. If you want to make this a full size picture, you can make this 11 and a half by 8 inches. Um, you can go with that. But all that's necessary to turn in for this is a 7 by 5, resolution 300. And it says color mode here. This is a good thing to always check, otherwise you're going to have to switch it later. Change it from grayscale to RGB. All right, there we go. So let's kick this off. Um, we're going to open up the different pictures here. I already have them all open. We're going to start with this background picture. Right click, copy, and paste, control V. And we're going to size this up, control T, spread it out. And there we go. Now we're going to get the next thing. And we're going to head over and we're going to get this avocado. So right click, copy, switch on over, and we're going to paste that avocado in there. This is the easiest thing to select, everyone. We're going to just use the magic wand tool. So one, two, three, four down, click and hold. Underneath the quick selection tool is the magic wand tool. And here we go. Click on the white. Delete. Now, if you notice down at the bottom here, it has given us that shadow as well. So if you, you can also select the plus on the quick selection tool, get rid of that. And if you want to go to the extra mile on this little selection, you can also go to the refine tool and smooth this out, feather it a little bit, contrast, maybe shift the edge, and then delete. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to switch back over to our files. So we got rid of the avocado. We got the store. Let's do the olives. Now the olives, what's interesting about this is we have, it's already kind of cut out for us. This is what's known as a PNG file. Now a PNG file has transparency inside of the file. So it's already cut out usually. And we can use this to our advantage um, sometimes. For us, it's not really going to matter. 
But if you want the transparency of a PNG file to come into Photoshop with you, you have to save the image first. So instead of copying the image, which if I do that, it's going to give us this black border, this black border. But instead of copying it, we're going to right click, save image as, okay, it says olives. And then we're going to bring that olive picture in here. I'm just dragging it in like that. And you notice it's already cut out around the outside because that's a PNG file. Now I just did a shorthand method there of dragging it directly from here in the lower left hand corner, which has a shortcut to or downloaded to. I drag that into Photoshop. If I was going to do this from Photoshop, I go to File, Open, and then I would choose, you know, my Olives file. Okay. I'm just going to drag that in there again. Okay. There are my Olives. Check. And I just want one olive, and I'm going to make it a perfect circle, so I'm going to just use the ellipse tool. So click and hold on the rectangular marquee, marquee tool, get the ellipse tool, hold the shift button, and that allows me to select a perfect circle. And then I'm still holding down the mouse. I'm holding down shift with one finger, and I use another finger to hold down space, and it allows me to just adjust my entire selection. So I'm going to kind of get a nice circle there right on the olive and it has this icon here which means it's a smart object you can go to layer and rasterize that smart object so it becomes I guess a dumb object or you can click on this which is the create layer mask or add layer mask and that's a better way to select anyway so we're just gonna boom click it and it's selected we're going to turn these into eyes, so Control T, size it down, checkbox, and if I want to make a second one, I could do Control J. That's one way to do it, and that duplicates the layer. I could also hold the Alt button down while I have the Move tool, and that allows me to, you know, every time I hold and drag another one out, I can drag out another olive like that. I can also go to layer and duplicate layer, which does the same thing as control J. So there's that. Now let's put some eyebrows. Now you can also rearrange how you're using this kind of like a Mr. Potato Head, only I guess it's a Mr. Avocado Head. So I'm going to use the chives, the picture of the chives now, and we're going to bring that in. So right click copy paste. Now there's all these white spaces, gray spaces in the middle here, and honestly I don't want to spend the time clicking a billion times with my magic wand tool, you know, getting in between here and then there. That's ridiculous. So I'm going to use this other selection method called select color range. So I go up to select color range. I'm going to click on the white area and I, I'm going to increase the fuzziness 180 seems good. And what it's doing is it's selecting the white and light gray parts in the middle there. Just a couple of clicks. It selects all this other stuff on other layers, but if we hit delete, it only affects layer 3 because that's the layer that we've got selected. I'm going to deselect this. That's control D. You can also use right click and deselect or you can go up to select and deselect. And that gets rid of what we call the marching ants. So I'm going to move this into place. I'm going to make them into some eyebrows. But you can do other fun things with them. Hold Alt, select another one over. If I want to flip this, I can go to Edit, Transform, and Flip horizontally. Okay, now i got two eyebrows. That's looking pretty sweet there. Let's get that body picture in there. So this man in the suit, right click, copy. We're going to paste that in there, but I want to get rid of all of this gray. You know what's a great tool for this? Magic wand tool. A quick selection tool, rather. I'm going to select the body. And if I zoom in here, 
I noticed that I'm not getting right under the armpit there, and I do want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go to minus selection. I make my brush quite a bit smaller. I do plus, touch that up, and the head isn't too big of a deal because it's going to get covered up with a avocado head anyways. I'm going to select the mask, smooth this out, feather a little bit, shift the edge. Oh, that's too much feathering. And OK. And I'm going to click Add Layer Mask, and that's going to cut out all the stuff behind him. This is looking really good so far. But unfortunately, our guy is in front of the avocado, and it's supposed to be the other way around. So all I have to do is click and drag the man in the suit. I'm going to put it underneath Layer 2, which is our avocado. Now, one of the problems that we're having right away here is we've got all of these layers, and we don't know what they are. So I'm going to start labeling them. And I'm just double-clicking on the title. And this way, I know what everything is. I've got kind of a, another little issue here. I mean, his legs are just tiny. Now, this could be kind of just funny looking. We could make it funny looking like that. But I want to get him, get everything a little bit more in proportion. So I'm going to size up this guy. But I want to take all of the things on the avocado head and kind of shrink them down together. I don't want to do them all. So here's a trick. I click on avocado. I'm going to hold down the shift button and click on the top layer here. And all of these layers become, get selected. So I want to do control T. They all size down together. Adjust it like that. That's looking good. Now as we get to the end of all this, it's going to look something similar to this. You know, he's getting held up in the supermarket by a monkey with a salad shooter, which I thought was kind of funny. So we're going to cut out the rest of these things. and You'll have something that looks similar to this. Feel free to have some fun and maybe even look for some different pictures uh, to incorporate into your final project. But some of the things um, to make sure that you do at the end, you got the text, you have the speech bubbles, you have obviously this whole other character off to the right here. Some things that you may not realize is that there's a bluish tint to the color in the background. And there's also something called vignetting where the edges and the corners get a little bit darker and everything in the background is a little blurrier to create a little bit more depth. So. You can use this written one, and you can also use the resources online in the videos.